here we go. Here's the reason we've been doing the whole Fast and Furious franchise. Fast and Furious 9 is directed by Justin Lin and written by Daniel Creasy and Justin Lin. I guess. I wonder if they write the script for this first and as they're making it, they notice how ridiculous this move, these movies are and then they're like, all right, we need someone to just show how ridiculous this whole movie is. So let's just get Roman Pierce to just express it. Roman Pierce is more the audience in this movie than ever before. So self-aware of borders, borders on breaking the fourth wall. Alright, so look, I'll get into the gist of it. I'm not even going to tell you who's in this movie. You know who's in this movie. There's so many names to run down. You know who's in it. It's fucking like a million people. <clears throat> and I guess we all know what the plot is. It's, uh, it's so soap opera. You know, these movies are <laughs> so soap opera. We've done... Uh, amnesiac girlfriend who lost her memory. <laughs> and now we've got like long lost brother no one ever knew they had. We've got like retcons galore and all this kind of stuff. So yes, we've got Dominic's brother. It's Jacob played by John Cena. And he's a bad guy and they've got to stop him. And he's not really family because he's the bad evil one and all this kind of stuff. And then, you, you know, you throw in some other characters here from all sorts of other movies just to kind of bring it all together. In some ways, it almost felt like a final movie if I didn't already know there were going to be more planned to be made. Sometimes it felt like it was the final one. Like, there were times I thought Roman was talking about retiring and things like that. But no, 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 not really. There's a fly. Sometimes I felt like this movie was going to go in interesting directions and it didn't. I'm not to say it's a bad movie at all. I enjoyed my time with it, but this was not as good as Fate of the Furious. It wasn't. It's not quite as good as Hobbs and Shaw either. And I had problems with that movie too. But let's get into it. I'm going to... There's going to be some spoilers here. And the first one is no one can out family family. This is the movie... The franchise that set up, we're not friends, we're a family. Every movie has to have this now. All the Marvel movies have it, all of them. Like, you know, DC movies and stuff too, we're a family. Like, every other movie I'm like, this franchise, I let that kind of slide. But this time I thought they were going to do something a bit more interesting. They set, they set Jacob Toretto up to be this kind of cold badass only to turn out he's just misunderstood and Dominic was wrong like there's one for a lot of the movie you, you, you're under the impression that he's this like serious killing motherfucker and then you find out not really and it's disappointing in fact I would go so far as to say this movie lacks a villain The only other villain in this is like, oh, there's two. There's this kind of rich Swedish dude who cares. He's just a spoiled brat motherfucker who cares about him. And then there's Cypher, who's awesome and does almost jack shit in this entire movie, which is so disappointing. You know, when... <clears throat> See, I thought this movie would be about fucking John Cena... And Charlie Saron teaming up to, you know, take over the world, of course, and also beat up Dom Toretto's family and shit. But that doesn't really happen. She's a prisoner for most of the most of the movie. Like John Cena's a prisoner, and I'm just like, eh. okay, would have been a lot cooler if you teamed up. Now you've got the Toretto you always wanted, and he's just as capable. But we don't, we don't get that. Eh. Oh look. There's, I love Sung Kang, and I love Han Lei, and man, I guess you've got your ready-made retcon maker here, because Mr. Nobody you could just use for everything now, because he's so mysterious, and, so, and he's got so many resources that 
I guess you, you can explain anything away with just like using him, which is what they do. It's fine. At the end of the day, I just wish they didn't spend so long time, so long explaining it. Like, just let him be around. But no, we have to have that. <laughs> and it was fine. Like, I did miss the guy. I'm so happy he's back. But he's not even my favourite. Not in this movie. It's Roman Pierce. Because Roman Pierce is, like... He might as well be looking at the camera and winking the whole time. And it's so self-aware whenever he's on screen. Because at the start of the movie, he gets shot at by all these guys. He's not even zigzagging. And they all miss. Then he kills a whole bunch of them. And then he narrowly escapes death. And then he fucking survives space. And all this time, he was saying, like, this is just bullshit. Look at all these holes in my jacket. None of them hit me. And isn't this just ridiculous? Wow, we're so lucky. And I'm like... You don't really need to explain why you guys keep living. These are big, dumb action movies, but thank you. Thanks. I do appreciate that. I guess this is the movie's way of saying, look, we're going to be bonkers here. So here's, Ro here's Roman Pierce going, this shit's bonkers. You know, just to kind of get you in that mindset. It reminded me of Tenet, where there's a character early on in Tenet that just says, yeah, you're not going to understand it all, so don't worry about it. And I felt like that character said that to the audience. So I feel like Roman's saying, like, look. <sighs> we're going to bend physics over and really give it to it this time. Like, you think, you think you've seen nothing? Like, look at this. We're going to send a car to space. A fucking car. Wouldn't it burn up through the atmosphere? Like, the little windows and stuff? Sure, they've got space suits on when they go into space. But, like, they're in a car. That car would have burned up. The windows would have been, like, this thin. How do they, what, they fly through the hole in the ozone layer? Is that how they did it? Like, that sounds like I'm shitting on this movie, doesn't it? <laughs> it really does. But I don't, I still managed to have fun with it. The action set pieces are great. There's some really cool character moments. Uh, for me, mostly involving Mia. I really liked Mia's interactions with, uh, with, with, with Letty, with, uh, well, Toretto, and with Jacob. Those were some of my favourite interactions. It's, it's, it's a fine, solid movie. It's just... <sighs> a little too all over the place for me. Like, these movies scratch credulity and it's just fine. I think, for me, this one stretches it a little too much. Just a little bit. And so we don't get something as strong as Fate of the Furious or as obnoxiously fun as Hobbs and Shaw. We had a movie that tries. Like, we had the computerized cars the last movie that were just being used to con remote control. And now we've got the fucking magnets and shit. And the magnets are pretty cool. I mean, it doesn't really make any sense. One, just, you know, you know, all this property damage and stuff. No one gets run over. No one really bleeds in these movies. Have you noticed that? I don't know, man. For a movie, for high octane movies about ball, about like badasses with balls, no one even gets stabbed. There's no blood. Not that I really need blood, but you know, there's. I guess there's no situations or bad guys that put them in situations where they're going to get hurt along the way. And that's maybe the problem. And that Roman Pierce illustrated it for me. I'm like, okay, not a scratch. So someone's going to get a scratch in this movie, right? They're going to get shot here or at least something. Hey, pinky cut off. Who knows? No, nothing like that. All pretty much without a scratch. Maybe some blood from some weird place that's dripping down their face. But that's all the blood. It just seems kind of toned down weird when you've got all these guns and action and stuff and all this property damage and shit. And people jumping from fast moving cars onto other ones. Why am I making these gripes now? These have been tropes since the fucking first one. All I'm saying is, it's a solid good time. Go see the movies. My wife and sister liked this one more than I did. But I didn't hate it, but they, de they definitely liked it more. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. It's solid. You'll have fun with it. But I don't know if this will be people's favourite. So, there we go.
that's all of them now. All of them so far. Room for more. But that, I guess, no. There's no way I'm going to be able to keep this old tile. We'll lose it somehow. So let's just get rid of it now. <laughs> uh. Nobody dies. All the bad guys become good guys. I'm kind of sick of all the bad guys becoming good guys. I mean, Cypher might be the one exception, but she didn't really do anything this movie. Still, I'm interested to see what they do next. I think there's probably a Hobbs and Shaw next before there's a Fast 10. And I was glad to go along for the ride. Along for the ride. With, uh, with my family. It was, it was fun watching these. Glad I did it. Wish Fast 9 kind of lived up to everything I liked about Fate of the Furious. And it doesn't quite. The potential was there, though. They just kind of played it safe, and that's fine. I don't th ever, now, ever since the passing of Paul Walker, I don't think they really want to kill any characters off. Uh, and that's probably why they're bringing back characters, too. Because, I don't know, man. Maybe they feel they need them all. You know, if they're alive, we might as well use them. If they're dead, we can't use them. It's weird. Oh well, give me a like, dislike, share and subscribe.